All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 18th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. And all I can say is, Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yikes. Uh, yes, the judgment of God is justly so, right, falling heavily on what is called the Western world, the first world, as it used to be called, uh, the United States, uh, Western Europe, and... Uh, uh, Canada, Australia, them things. England, mm, yeah. England can't decide what they are other than an island. Uh, they are under, they've just lost their minds. Like the entire West has, is, is in a state of clinical insanity, unable to tell reality from fantasy. That is insane. They used to lock people up for that. Now that now they just give you a pill that'll give you a buzz and say, "Go, go home." <laughs> then they go and sell the pills and buy something better, <laughs> because uh, illegal drugs are cheaper now. <laughs> hey, say it's as as uh, I've discussed this issue with other people, and and we were, we were sort of speculating about uh, Illinois when they legalized marijuana here, what the uh, what the criminal element would do and this is free enterprise they just sell it cheaper than the the state sponsored stores state sponsored said state sponsored intoxication centers uh that will lose you your job you know you you you, you cannot if you test positive for for pot and a lot of things you're just out of your job that's it Wow, they, so they legalize things like pot, and then they want to crack down on, dr on guns. It's like, wait a minute, the two, see, usually people don't, sober-minded people don't use firearms to, to, to kill people, unless it's, it's an act of self-defense. Then you better be sober-minded. Oh, my. Anyway, I, I think the, the, uh, the church, especially in the West, needs to get used to the idea we are already in tribulation. Tribulation is, the word uh, tribulation means pressure, stress, and it results in the separating of the, the, of the wheat and the chaff, the corn and the chaff, if you happen to be in Europe. Speaking English, English, yes, they call it corn over there, but uh, it's the same thing. They're both grasses. <laughs> One's just bigger than the other. It's otherwise known as maize. Uh, actually, on both continents, you can get by with maize for corn, and then, then wheat is called corn. <laughs> confusing. The world is always confusing. But I mean, uh, the the word the uh, tribulation. Let me let me look it up for you because it's I I want to get this right. I, um. Without just rambling on it. Uh, let's see. Where is my Bible works. Uh, the, the the Latin, the English word tribulation comes from the Latin tribulum, which is actually the name of a, among other things, the name of a uh, agricultural implement called a threshing sledge. They would drag the sledge uh, over wheat or barley, things like that, in order to separate the kernels from the chaff and the straw and then you'd you'd uh, winnow that uh, by throwing sh uh, shovelfuls of it up into the air when you had a breeze and it would blow the lighter chaff away but the 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 kernels themselves having weight and substance fall to the ground that's how you cleanse it 
And that's the purpose of tribulation as far as the church goes. God's purpose, Christ's purposes. Uh, John the Baptist said the Lord is, he's uh, on his threshing floor already, separating the wheat and the chaff, uh, the judgment of God. We are in tribulation. A time of testing and pressure, uh, especially in the West. Well, everybody's promised it here. I, this happens in First Thessalonians chapter three, verse four it says, "For, in fact, we told you before when we were with you that you, uh, with you that we would suffer tribulation." just as it happened, and you know. <laughs> okay, this was about the apostle particularly suffering it. But the word tribulation is um, thlebo, and it means to press, as in grapes, you know, the, the, get the grape juice out. Uh, to press hard upon a compressed way, like the straight and narrow way of Christ. Uh, but it, uh, it means... Uh, but the, it, it, so it, it is a pressure and a distress that's applied to press hard on things. Uh, when our modern harvesting machine called a combine, combine uh, picker thresher, so it really is, works, it, it cuts the grain off and runs it up into the threshing part of the machine where it is, it is run through a threshing cylinder where a bars, uh, sort of that combed bars uh, with a small gap uh, on a rub them against other bars on a cylinder so it it just the rubbing action uh, to hand separate say barley or wheat corn you do the same thing you put the head in your hand and go like this and that separates the worthless inedible portions from that were necessary to produce the corn from the, the actual kernels, which is what you want. And the church is in that. It's in a process of separation. God is separating the his people from the the chaff that's in the churches. Pressure. Uh, Jesus talking about great tribulation. Uh, in fact, might as well go there. Read what Jesus said. Matthew 24, verses 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for, the, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The elect is those chosen. Now, people shouldn't make automatic assumptions about what the elect means there, but maybe chosen to endure to the end or uh, exactly what's going on there. So then if anyone says to you, look, here is Christ or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. In other words, there's, there's going to be a time of deception. And Paul says this too. And the church... It, it will separate those who truly belong to Christ from those who don't. It's the threshing floor. The winnowing shovel of Christ. Judgment's coming. It's already here. It's falling hot and heavy on this planet. Apparently COVID. I still wonder if there was a connection. Well, obviously there's a connection. When the person who claims to be the head of the, the Church of Jesus Christ, the, the Roman Catholic, the arrogant popes, uh, uh, popery, that claim to be, he claims to be the vicar, the substitute for Jesus Christ. When he brings in 
pagan idols, not even Christian idols, you know, like statues of Mary, but pagan idols with pagan priests and priestesses, shamans and shamanesses. From, they imported them from the Amazon for his Amazonian synod. Of course, the bishops and the cardinals and the pope we didn't want to go to Amazon in person. It's sort of hot and sweaty there. They didn't want to sweat. So they brought them to the Vatican. And they had pagan ceremonies in the Vatican Garden. And then they brought the uh, pagan idols with their holy canoe, uh, 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 a chup, uh, the Chupamama or whatever they call it. It's Mother Earth into the Vat the the St. Peter's itself before the high altar, paraded them around uh, in the presence of Christ. Because they believe it literally they believe that the uh, the wafer, the consecrated bread, is the body is the living Christ. The body, blood, soul and divinity, the living Christ. It is God Himself. Christ in the in the flesh. Quite literally in the monstrance, and that's why they will worship that. So they, they bring these pagan idols into the very, what's supposed to be the temple of God, the very presence of Christ, under his, under his face, in his sight, and they worship it. The cardinals and the bishops and the pope and then they all parade out of the out of St. Peter's together in a grand processional, carrying the holy canoe. And the next month, bam, COVID hits. The Amazonian Senate was in October, I think about the twenty fourth, the, the, the about the third week of October of twenty nineteen. The first reported cases of COVID-19 occurred in November. And what country got smashed especially? Not China. Italy. Do you remember that? Italy. You know what country's been hit hardest by COVID? as far as absolute numbers, United States. Or absolutely reported numbers. Or absolute exaggerated numbers, I don't know which. But now, okay, so COVID's finally pretty much gone. Except for the fear mongers out there that, that are just afraid of everything. Predicting uh, more and more and more. <laughs> Now what do we got? Biden. Okay. So in 2020, the American people elected the worst president in American history, the most corrupt president in American history. The Biden Cram family, they elected him for president. And of course, now the one they're trying to punish is Trump, who for I don't know what reason had suspicions the election might have been manipulated. No, no, just all of social media, all of mainstream media, the Congress and and the Congress and the and the uh, deep state, the bureaucratic uh, regimes like the FBI and the NSA had been trying to remove Trump from office for four years. His four years of presidency, right? Remember. Riots, everything else, the, the Democrats approving of Antifa's riots and destruction and Black Lives Matter, everything else. Now, Trump, he's basically a social liberal. He's not even a conservative. He's just a businessman. <laughs> the art of the deal, you know? How to make a deal. You know, you have to have, give somebody, give both sides something. Okay, so they have to get rid of They had no problems with him before he ran for president. He was one of the darlings of New York. I still think Ted Cruz should have used that old uh, 
salsa ad. You know, salsa made in this salsa is made in New York City. Uh, but so and now they're trying to make a big thing out of January 6th. Were there legitimate concerns about the, whether the election had been overtly manipulated? Yeah. Uh, but I think the real manipulation was corporate America and the deep state and the Congress. They were the real ones that manipulated things. They did everything they could to overthrow the, 19, uh, the 2016 election. And they pulled out all the stops to make sure Trump wasn't reelected. Now, whether Trump was a little bit, you know, they say it, you're not paranoid if they really are out to get you. Did Trump go a little bit overboard? Well, based on the actors involved against him, it'd be hard to go overboard. But no, he didn't actually incite the thing. Now, this whole January 6th thing is trying to make sure he can't run again in 2024. They are still conspiring against the president, the former president. I guess they still call them presidents, don't they? Now, there are a number of people out there I would rather have in the office than, than Trump, probably. But the, the, our, our hope is not in government. But we've been under... Judgment of God is on this world. The very fact that Americans chose their own judgment... Oh, the irony of God. Remember he gave David a choice because of David's sin? You know, which one of these three are you going to choose for your punishment? Well, America chose its punishment. It chose Biden. It chose the Democrats. It, it chose the party of... of child sacrifice and murder and lawlessness and sexual perversion. It chose the party that stands for everything that God hates. Now the Republicans aren't much better because they stand for the love of money more than anything else. They are corrupt. The establishment is corrupt. The whole thing's corrupt. There may be some individuals that are not as corrupted, but I don't know how you could stay there without being corrupted. But those individuals can't accomplish anything. You know, it's like Rand Paul. He might stand for good things, more or less. But can he accomplish anything? No, because he won't play the game. Anyway, now, now, the judgment of God, Joe Biden, has executed the judgment of God on the godless West by sanctioning Russia, by cutting off the West from the, the resources that Russia has in abundance that nobody else has in abundance anymore especially when Biden made sure the United States could no longer be self-sufficient. See, <laughs> apparently Biden and his administration is of the Marie Antoinette, Antoinette school of social service, government service. Uh, when she was uh, notified of the fact that the people, the French people had no bread. Remember her famous words, the words she's at least reputed to have said. Let them eat cake. They just don't, they don't have bread? Well, give them something else and give them cake. She did not, she could not comprehend that that meant they had no food at all because there was nothing else. See, see France had basically bankrupted itself in supporting the godless American Revolution. Interesting how the wheels of God's justice work. 
And then France experienced the French Revolution. And everybody lost their heads, including, including dear Marie. I don't believe she ever said it out of malice. It was probably the incomprehensibility of what was happening, the reality of France, and what the policies of the French government had done in their perpetual dispute with England backing the American Revolution. They were deceived by Ben Franklin into backing the American Revolution, and it ruined France, destroyed, it led to the reign of terror and the absolute rule of Antichrist in France. The French set out to totally destroy Christianity. In France, that meant Roman Catholicism, but they weren't picky. They literally set up an idol to, what was it, wisdom? Can't remember exactly. And, and uh, worshipped that. And then anyone that did not approve of the new regime was, well, the, they invented the guillotine. Someone over there did that. Yeah. Anyway, the church in the West, most of the church in the West is destroyed. And it's mostly destroyed in the United States. And we'll look at that a bit. But we're already in tribulation. We're already under intense pressure in the United States and where remnants of true Christianity is in the West. If you want, uh, the only safe places might be outside the West, you know, third world or, or Russia. But even Russia, I mean, you'd, you real Christians would probably run afoul of, you'd have to keep your head down a bit over there because the uh, the Russian Orthodox Church, there, there's always going to be this, this tension between real Christianity and state Christianity or uh, visible institutional Christianity. because that the institutional churches claim authority they don't have. That's the problem. So we're already in a situation where, under like the Biden administration, we have the, you know, I thought Obama was bad, but Biden, he is Satan personified. I mean, Satan is, is enthroned in the White House in the Oval Office and in Congress. And he pretty much has all the levers in his hands, as he's demonstrated under Trump. You know, you, you realize the deep state, the FBI and the NSA and the CIA, they were all out to get Trump. And, of course, Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, all of social media. Even where they're not practicing overt censorship, the... The the uh, the whole system is not it, it it rewards the very thing that corrupts civilization self centeredness banality self interest it just is a is a it is a um, a sin amplifier it just accelerates the degeneration of society. because it rewards people that appeal to the, the, the greatest audience. The whole, the whole game, apparently, I always tried to figure out, what is the purpose? Facebook, what is this game thing that they play? Where is, how many likes can you get? How many followers can you get? I don't get many subscribers. I think people are afraid to subscribe to me. Because they know that YouTube and that watches and tracks that stuff. <laughs> Who you subscribe to? I think they'd be ashamed to subscribe to me. 
because I'm a dissident in a world that does not tolerate dissidents. I'm a dissident because I belong to Christ. So let's look at the news for the week, the Christian news. So we'll go over to uh, wayoflife.org, to David Cloud's website, who is a generally pretty much sane fundamentalist. Uh, even when he gets, he can get off on his own little thing. But it's usually there's a re good reason behind it. Like he's got a thing about church music. And the older I get, and David's a little older than me, the, uh, and I wouldn't identify myself as, I have differences with independent fundamental Baptists. They're not independent enough. They're not fundamental enough. They're not scriptural enough. They they don't even see some of the, like the dispensationalism, they can't see how it affects their interpretation of scripture. Or they're, they're not independent enough, they're not willing to be a nonconformist and buck the, the uh, independent Baptists aren't really that independent. They're peer pressure. They'll blackball you. I mean, another church, you know, the big name churches, where they, they had a history of, of blackballing pre preachers that did not conform to the, the hotshots ideas. That's, it's sinfulness is everywhere. But <clears throat> since we're in the Great Tribulation, I guess I can put that down now. Yeah, false teachers, false preachers, false prophets. Jesus says, watch out. I've told you in advance. They're coming. They're here. They're here. So uh, let's go back. Uh, this is a story, the, the Disney gospel. <laughs> uh, one thing fundamentalists do, they, they, they pretty much have a good sense of when things are wrong. Something's wrong. It's like Disney. We've got things in society that, that 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 nobody thinks anything too bad about Disney, all these wholesome children's films and everything else. But when you look at them carefully, and David is good at that, uh, he sees things there that are not right. And of course, yeah, I mean, Disney was not, Walt Disney was not a Christian. At least not in a, any kind of a public way. So, these things you think, well, what's the big deal about it? Well, you'll find out eventually. And where's Disney today? They're they are dedicated. They have dedicated themselves to the queering of the children. And I believe queering is a is a proper use of the word among those people, a particular community, uh, because it's sort of like a generic to cover the entire LGBTQ plus whatever spectrum. In other words, as long as you're sexually degenerate, an antichrist, that's it goes. I guess I don't know how, and I don't not trying to. It, so the, it's not. It's it's among them. It's not a bad word. My point. So Friday church news of this week, June seventeenth. Uh, we'll have to take a look at this. Come on. Oh, I can't do it there. Got to have the right window. <sighs> the hymn society. Now, so I'm not quite sure what the relationship between the Methodist hymn society and the United Methodist Church is, but the hymn society publishes songs for queers. And again, I don't believe that is, that is a uh, self-identifier. For the hundredth, for its hundredth anniversary, the Hymn Society of the United Methodist Church has published a series of songs that glorify homosexuality under the title "Songs for the Holy Other." That is a very blasphemous name, uh, by the way. It's also redundant because "holy" means other, the otherness of God, God's holiness. What separates God from everything else is His utter otherness. He is God and no th nothing else is God. No other thing is God. So his otherness. 
He is, uh, you know, he is the creator, which makes him, which is uh, differentiates him completely from the creation in a uh, absolute original sense. He gets a little complicated in Christ. Uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes theology is something best avoided. Um, the for, uh, songs for the holy other. So this is a separate, like, little, like a uh, the little chorus books. So many churches have to their own detriment. All these little empty ditties. Like, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. And what Lord are you singing to, by the way? Not mindless little chants, you know. They're, they're to put you out of your consciousness rather than into it. Actually, they are, by the way. Charismatic worship is uh, related to Buddhist and Hindu chants. Uh, the mindless repetition is designed to deaden your conscious mind, to make it, basically put your brain to sleep. All they want is emotion and acceptance. They do not want rational thought. That is the enemy for charismatics and Pentecostals, the idea that you would engage your brain and think about what's going on. It breaks the spell. The illusion, the false miracles, all that stuff. You know, like, did I just see that preacher, that, that traveling evangelist, that miracle worker, slip the heel of the shoe back and claim the leg lengthened? Yes, I did. And I indeed did see that one time. It's like, I just saw it. These people are frauds. But nobody else noticed. Wow. Uh, when somebody's claiming the power to do miracles, it's well to be somewhat skeptical. I'll t Prove it. Don't just tell me stories about what you've done. Prove it. I want to see it. <clears throat> Because miracles don't happen every day. There is today. You know, Jesus warned about these false miracle workers. So he said many, many would come. So the odds are. He didn't say true miracle workers would come. He said false miracle workers would come. In the last days. So the 46 songs include a hymn a hymn, H-Y-M-M-M-N, hymn, for self-acceptance. Oh, Joel Osteen hymn. Self-acceptance. To, to you know, I once had a, a Lutheran pastor. It was over the Internet back before there was an Internet. A dial-up bulletin board that was part of the uh, ELCA chastised me because I hadn't accepted my sinfulness. So the idea that a Christian would struggle against their sin was not to be, that's very un-Lutheran apparently. Uh, yeah, but if you've been born again, you hate sin, especially your own. If you haven't been born again, apparently like this pastor, you accept it. So this is this is about self-acceptance of your sinful, wicked lifestyle and perversion. See, it's one thing to be tempted and sometimes give in to temptation, but to hate the sin, to hate that. A Christian can do that. I mean, I, I'm sure there are Christians that either had a, uh, that are, have their flesh has drawn them toward homosexuality in the world and everything else, and perhaps they practice it one time. But, you know, 
and as a Christian, a born-again Christian, you can still be tempted. But that you hate it. And if you fail and fall into that temptation, you, you just hate yourself and God, forgive me and deliver me from this and help me. I'm so weak, but you're strong, you know. But a, a, a person who's not born again, they still love the sin. And they want to see, how can I, how can I practice this sin and still get, get to heaven? I'm going to find a church that will encourage me to accept myself and live out my, my depraved lifestyle and also tell me that God loves me and uh, made me this way and accepts me like this and just tells me how wonderful I am in this. Basically nullifies the very idea of sin. Apparently this is the Methodists. The Methodists, when I was growing up, I can remember when I was a young young boy, I was uh, in a car with my aunt who lived right there. They were our neighbors, too. She, They didn't have any children yet, and I was the firstborn. Uh, they, they were, uh, she was, my brother, my un uncle and my dad lived, you know, like kitty corner from each other. And uh, anyway, so... I was my I think we had other kids by then so I would be over at her house all the time because <laughs> they didn't have any so I get pampered you know so I was probably f five six five years old I think anyway I was in a car with her and we drove past this church I mean we were Lutherans that, that was I didn't know anything about anything else it was a Methodist church guess and I asked her what, what's that what's that she said, it's a church she said, what kind of church? Is oh, that's Methodist. Do you ever go there? No, they're too strict. United Methodist Church. Too strict. Do you do know, and it's just that's something I should tell the Nazarenes, remind them that, uh, that Nazarenes were once Methodists that left it because the Methodists became, well, worldly. Now the Nazarenes have gone the same way. So here, the Methodists, you know, the circuit riders, the, the preachers of holiness, the preachers of salvation that haunted the plains and the, the frontiers, that the, the, de the evangelists that would ride from farm to farm, from settlement to settlement, day after day in all weather on horseback, until they burned themselves out to circuit riders. Often died young. Now they have a, a songbook for queers. In my lifetime, gone from the reputation among others as being too strict to about as bad as you can be. How can you be any more apostate than this? Now that not all Methodists are United Methodists and the United Methodists are in the process of divorce. And this is why there's a divorce going on or attempting to go on. COVID interrupted it. But Christians cannot abide in the same outfit with people that promote this stuff. There is no fellowship there. But there's such a confusion that they just don't get up and walk out. Well, there, the confusion is love of money and property. It's how do we do, what do we do with the church buildings? See, it's, it's a fight over the property and the pensions. How do we divide the assets among the divorced parties? That's what's making it difficult. 
Some churches have decided, we don't care, we're just going to walk. So a hymn for self-acceptance. God calls you good. God doesn't call anyone good. Only God is good. Only him of himself is good. Just like he is the only one, the, the I am, that he is the self-existent one. In the same way as goodness, he's the only one where goodness flows out of him by itself. It, 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 it's him. No one else is independently good. No one else is autonomous. No one else is self-existent. God calls you good. No, he doesn't. See, these are the words of false prophets, false teachers that will that want to make sure. This is Satan wants to make sure that no one hears the gospel and no one is called to repentance and no one discovers freedom in Christ. Freedom from the bondage of sin, from a degradation of sin. This is about as far as degraded as people can get. And it is, as Paul said, it's, it is improper to speak in detail of the acts that these people do. It's one of those kinds of things that, that if you read it in detail, what happens you wish you hadn't because now it's in your mind there's some things you just don't want to know <sighs> God of queer transgressive spaces God of queer transgressive spaces? I'm not even sure that's... Is that correct? God of many faces. The kingdom of God is the queerest of nations. These are hymns. And... Queerly beloved and quirky, queer, and wonderful. These are songs published by the Hymn Society of the United Methodist Church. Not the, not a, uh, you know, there's been the Metropolitan Church, the, the gay churches, uh, denomination for gays. This is John Wesley's church this is the apostasy brothers and sisters we are in the great apostasy nowhere in human history in the history of Christianity has such things been publicly extolled in the church not even Rome publicly extols. They don't sing hymns to the glory of queerness. We are in the great tribulation. We are under the great pressure, pressure to conform to this. Not just from the government, not just from society, but from what calls itself the church of Jesus Christ. <sighs> the Hymn Society's goal with the new songs is to provide congregations working to dis uh, to dismantle the walls between homosexuals and straights, that's added by David Cloud, Dem dis dismantle these walls 
with a toolbox of hymns. Oh, Rick Warren, tool, Warren toolbox. Toolbox of hymns by and for those who identify as members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, pansexual, transgender, bi uh, non-binary, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, romantic, two-spirit, and other sexual gender minority LGBTQIA to S plus uh, communities and their allies. They say that lesbianism, homosexuality, etc. are God-given gifts and are in and of themselves a gift to the church as we reflect the rainbow diversity of God's creation. Well, God's creation fell with humanity. I'm tempted to rub this in the nose of Calvinists because they say that God decreed absolutely everything that happens in exhaustive detail. And if, you, if you're a Calvinist and you don't know that, then you need to look at it. You need to look at your own confessions of faith. You need to look at the Westminster Confession of Faith or the Second London Baptist or whatever and realize that the exhaustive decree of all things means this is the will of God. See, those the problem with that, with that theology that comes from Aristotle and Augustine and Aquinas and others, uh, their idea of the perfection of God actually makes God the author of sin. Inevitably, unavoidably, even though they deny it does, it does. There's no other, you have to be irrational not to have that conclusion. I'm not saying that they are the cause of this, but that they would it'd be that somebody that knew this could rub this in their face and justify whatever this way. And they'd be hard pressed to deal with it. In other words, God decreed all sin, which makes God the author of sin. But they, oh no, he didn't. He only decreed it. He didn't actually do it. He just caused the. So in other words, they they distinguish the agent from the cause. Uh, man is guilty because he sins. God is not guilty, even though he caused the person to sin. <laughs> Inevitably, irresistibly caused it. Yikes. That's what, where you get when you go down the, uh, the path of theology rather than sticking in the scriptures. Okay, uh, let's go to the next week. And the big news this week at... Where is that? Th that last week, it was the week news actually this week. Rick Warren announces his successor. Well, this but this this week was the Southern Baptist Convention, and the big no, news that came out of that convention. Now, how does a pastor does he get the apparently in Rick Warren's church, the pastor gets every gets the right to do everything has all authority, because he uh, he announces his successor. Doesn't the congregation have a choice there? Apparently not. A husband wife pastor team. That's why uh, this became a story. Uh, apparently, uh, Rick Warren has ordained approximately three women as pastors at Saddleback Church. Now, Rick Warren's church is a Southern Baptist church, and, well, Southern Baptists don't believe in women pastors. And they've actually kicked some churches out. So the real news from the SBC this week was the, uh, the non-news. Uh, and somebody apparently uh, tried to get the uh, Rick Warren's church uh, removed from the Southern Baptist Convention for violating the Baptist faith and message, 2001. But I don't think the Southern Baptists understand their own convention. The Southern Baptist Convention has no authority over any local church. The, the faith and Baptist message is only 
uh, only applies, has only has authority over the entities of the convention, which are, are not churches. See, this is not a denomination in any sense. The, the Southern Baptist Convention is a um, basically like a missionary society composed of parachurch organizations that aren't under the authority of any church. This is why there was a, a big uh, controversy back in the beginning of the 19th century between the non-missionary Baptists and the missionary Baptists. Well, it wasn't about sending missionaries. It was about whether there was a legitimacy to parachurch missionary organizations, missionary associations. And the Baptists, the traditional Baptists, said no. And fundamental Baptists to this day have no missionary associations. The missionaries are sent by local churches. They may be supported by a number of local churches, but they are responsible to a particular church. And, of course, they have to come back, and if they want funds, they have to report to the churches that fund them what they've been doing. And that causes a little bit of overhead, but as opposed to the corruption that comes through entities like the Southern Baptists. But the very idea that the uh, all the Baptists can Baptist SBC can do is is disassociate themselves from a church. The, uh, there is the local Southern Baptist Church doesn't have to adopt the Southern Baptist Convention state, statement of faith at all. But as usual, people forget things. But the convention is trying to get authority. Now I hear they voted to, to keep a list of people in the SBC uh, ministry or whatever. I don't know exactly the details. Who are accused, accused of, of abuse. What kind of abuse? I'm not sure. Accused. So if there has been an accusation of abuse, you get uh, put on a list. You, you, do you have an opportunity to... Uh, is, is, no, is there any kind of uh, burden of proof? No, just accused. So you get blackballed, basically, because you've been accused. What is the SB... The SBC has nothing to say about what local churches do or their their ordination or how they choose their pastors or the local church doctrine or anything they have no basis to say anything about that that would be like billy graham's one of his charitable organizations interfering with your church trying to tell you who to choose as pastor No. That is, if you're going to be a Baptist, be an independent Baptist. <sighs> but that was the, the big deal at the convention seems to have been somebody made a move to try to remove the uh, Saddleback Church, Rick Warren's church, from the convention from being a, being a contributor. See, to be a member of the Southern Baptist Church uh, Convention means you give money to the convention. You can be individually members or your church can be a member. And if you donate money to the convention, that, that means you're part of the convention. But that's all they are. They're a parachurch missionary, but they've forgotten what missions are. I can tell this is going to be a two-part video. This is just the, the quick thing I was going to get through quick, uh, j just before I started talking about what I want to talk about. So, But this will just be uh, church news, I guess. But that was the big news at the convention. The big... Uh, big and then, then Rick Warren made an appearance. And basically, well, in a manipulative sort of way mocked the attempt to remove him. 
boasting about how many churches and Christians and everything else he has built. His, the Saddleback is still one of the largest churches in the Southern Baptist. Uh, Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Church, and especially the Purpose Driven Life, Rick Warren, Warren was tremendously influential and powerful in the Southern Baptists and in other denominations. He church all kinds of churches were using his corrupt material. The scandal of Rick Warren isn't, you know, this is one of those cases of straining at gnats but swallowing camels. The fact that Rick Warren has ordained three women to some sort of pastoral ministry hardly compares, those are the gnats, that hardly compares with the fact that all through his ministry he has proclaimed a false, powerless, damning gospel. A lawless gospel that has no power of God unto salvation. His own son committed suicide. Obviously, the power of God unto salvation wasn't present in his own son. See, Rick Warren is the, is the epitome of Southern Baptists. He is world-centered, flesh-centered, program-centered. Not Christ-centered. He does not know Jesus Christ. If he did, he would not have been doing what he's done. And the ordaining of women is nothing. See, ordaining women will not damn you to hell. Nor having a woman preacher will damn your church to hell. Not biblical. Believing a false gospel will damn you to hell, and preaching a false gospel will send you into the pit. The, the judgment will fall heaviest on those. Rick Warren is the judgment of God on the Southern Baptists. Now the Southern Baptists are shipwrecked. Shipwrecked. They don't even know what the gospel is, and they're chasing after the world. The gospel of racial reconciliation. Well, if you've been born again, race is no longer even an issue. They're trying to make Christians out of people that haven't been born again. Can't do it. Okay. Uh, so I guess that's church news from this Friday and last Friday. Doesn't look good out there. Uh, and it's better to stop the video here than continue on that. Repent. We're in tribulation. Times are getting worse, too. The judgment of God will continue to fall and it will intensify. If you don't know Christ, you're toast.